at gra.gov.gh for further inquiries and this issued by the Commissioner General of the GRA. Kindly visit gra.gov.gh to learn more. Amafi, so you know our conversation we've been talking about devotion and discipline, self-discipline particularly, mm -hmm. uh, even as, you know, our Muslim brothers and sisters went through the period of Ramadan. You know, they were very disciplined to have gone through it. You've shared your own experience. Sometimes when you're fasting, you ask yourself, what? You forget you're fasting and you mm -hmm. go and grab food. Yeah. Uh -huh. This morning we're joined by Sheikh Arim Yao Shaibu, who is spokesperson to the National Chief Imam, and Hanifa Yaya, who is managing partner here and partners at law. Hanifa, Sheikh, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Baraka Dasala. Good morning, Mr. Mamavi, everybody. Baraka Dasala, Baraka Kade. Thank you so much. Mm. Sheikh, are you on? Yeah, I'm on. I'm on. Thank right. you so much for the opportunity. Great, great, great. I'll get back to you too shortly because I need to learn a thing or two from you. How you're able to do that for 30 days all the time. <laughs> uh, but first, are you sinking in your bed and is your mattress failing to give you the safety and comfort that you deserve? Then get yourself a Royal Foam mattress which guarantees you the good relaxation, good sleep and relaxation that you deserve today. As space such as we've attached pillows to the mattresses you buy for free, get this offer in all our showrooms and sales outlets across the country. Don't be left out. Royal Foam wishes to say a big thank you to you the loyal customers for making them win the silver award at the 12 ghana business and financial services excellence awards please call them on 020-227-1000 for inquiries royal foam rest assured and Absa says, we know that life is go, 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 and that it is hard to make time for the things that really count. So we won't let banking get in your way. That's why with Absa's digital channels, you can bank when, where, and how you want, so you can focus on what or who is important to you. Banking has never been easier. Transfer funds into your savings account, pay your old school union dues, and your DSTV subscription, and many more with a click on your phone. Get things done simply when access digital channels that's africanacity and that's absa terms and conditions apply visit absa.com.gh for further details great so let's start with the conversation uh, briefly before we go for some messages um so shake i was asking earlier uh, how you're able to do this i mean um how many years have, uh, have you been fasting and how are you able to do it every year every year for 30 days 29 to 30 days um Thank you very much. Uh, let me also use the occasion to congratulate Muslims in Ghana and across the world for having gone through this one month spiritual exercise. Yeah, true. As a typical Zongo, Zongo uh, growing up as a typical Zongo child, um, as early as between age six and seven, we had begun fasting. What? Um, sometimes our parents will will restrain us, tell us. Uh, not to fast, but as they wake, as they wake up in the at dawn to take the early dawn meal, um, instinctively we also w wake up and and then and then we take. Mm. Then we begin the fast, and sometimes we are unable to do completely. Mm. By t midday, we are becoming so weak in the body, and then we are now given the chance to break the fast. Those who are able to now continue are able to continue the fasting until the, the, the sunset where we break the fast. So I have been making the dose reference that many, many people like me from the Zongo um, who are now uh, within the 60s, 70s, it had begun fasting for a long time until we became conscious of fasting as a duty um, given to us by God. And, uh, and, so, and so it's been... Uh, the annual fasting has been a tradition, if you like, call it an actual annual ritual, a seasonal devotion uh, for every committed uh, Muslim to undertake. It has become also a social something. So even if you are a Muslim in the Zongo community uh, or the Muslim community and you are not committed, just the fact that it has taken a social dimension, uh, you feel encouraged and then you are able to fast. That is why those who emphasize the social side of it alone will participate in the fasting, but that the spiritual benefit, sometimes they forfeit it because where they are coming from, they, they get encouragement only from the society. Mm. So it has become like a tradition, a culture, that annually they have, they have to do it. But going beyond 
going beyond what we call I call uh, the form and get into the substance or the essence. Uh, that's why we have been having our 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 challenges. So it's been a whole life of fasting every year. Great. I'll, I'll get back to you. Uh, but let me ask you, Hanifa. So how do you also do it? Uh, you know, 29, 30 days. Yes, as uh, Sheikh has said, we've, we, we've had a lifelong uh, time of practice. Um, by nine years, uh, as I can remember, you will fast uh, till midday. So you fast in the morning and break at midday. And as you grew older and older, you know, you extended the time full time. So it is habit. And because it is a spiritual exercise, uh, Allah helps us you know, to be able to, to do it. Mm. For instance, today I'm not fasting. I feel very hungry. I feel very thirsty. Um, but on days that you fast, you feel it, but, you know, it's, the option is not available to you. And the grace of Allah to be able to carry through um, the fast. Okay. Now, you, you, you've talked about something which we'll explore later. Sometimes you feel hungry, but you still, with the grace of Allah, are able to go through. But, um, you know, you talked about how you, you started when you were nine and then you break, break the fast at, uh, you know, 12. Um, you, also because you're a woman, you know, there are times then the women, so your mother would have to cook for you and she is fasting herself. Yes, so 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 everybody cooks. Uh, as you say, everybody fasts. Uh, so as you said, um, for a, a woman who has attained puberty uh, up until the start of menopause, you will have to break along the way when you have your menstrual uh, period. So sure. some have three days, some have five, some have one week. During those times, you are not allowed to fast. So you break your fast. Uh, but as soon as you finish with it, you continue the fasting. Mm. I remember as a child, it was quite interesting when um, uh, the, the, the older women in the house are cooking, and somebody has to taste the food. Mm -hmm. That's to what I was getting that to. The salt is adequate. Now, there, there is a rule that, that if there's nobody around, you can taste the food and spit it out. Mm. Yeah, it's not to let anything pass through. Oh. Uh, we lost uh, we lost <laughs> okay how about we go for a short break and then come back and continue the conversation stay with us we're joined this morning by Hanifa who is managing partner hey and partners at law and Sheikh Arim Yashai who spokesperson to the National Chief Imam we'll be right back Put that smile on the faces of your family and friends this month of Ramadan by shopping at Melcom on goods at affordable prices ranging from groceries, electronics, homeware, kitchenware, furniture, home decor, and many more. Terms and conditions apply. Melcom, where Ghana shops. Blood is life. Everybody needs blood to survive. In sickle cell disease, the red blood cells become fragile and break down easily. This leads to low blood levels known as anemia. Do you know that blood transfusion can save lives? But sometimes, the blood banks do not have the needed blood and money becomes of little relevance. That is why the International Sickle Cell Center and Airtel Tigo are pushing the Touch and Lights initiative to raise awareness. My name is Dr. Mary Ansel. Donate some blood today to save lives. To learn more, visit www.iscc.international. This initiative is brought to you by the International Sickle Cell Center, ISCC, in partnership with Airtel Tigo Touch and Lives. Airtel Tigo Live. Is simple. Hmm, someone smells great here and fresh, my love. Ha, I wish I could stay in the shower all day. <laughs> I know, right? Nothing beats a bath with geisha soap. It smells so good, it lasts long, and it's enriched with natural ingredients that work wonders for my skin. Mm -hmm. And it now comes with a fresh new look, giving us even more reasons to love our geisha bar. <laughs> new and improved geisha soap. Great new look, better fragrance, same natural ingredients, still all last time. This advert is FDA approved. Be strong and last long. 
Grandma looked very peaceful. I was completely amazed when I saw her neatly presented. She looked just like she was sleeping. You haven't seen anything yet, my brother. You should have seen the care and quality treatment they gave her at Transitions. Eh? One man, one woman, just like a five-star hotel. Wow. And not only that, we had a dedicated person to guide the family through the funeral planning process. Are you sure? Of course. From picking her up to when we lowered grandma down, everything was completely stress-free. They had all the needed funeral services, caskets, hairs, chapel, and so much more. <laughs> this one, dear, no family fight after all. I'm so happy we made a right decision to use transitions. With transitions, your loved one gets the best of care while the family enjoys a stress-free funeral planning process. Call us now on 0302-634-706. And no... Did I tell you they are affordable? Transitions, the funeral people. Are you tired of feeling left behind when it comes to your finances? Have no worries. Steady's Pay is here. We provide credit solutions for both business owners and salary workers. We offer loans within 24 hours at the lowest rate. Visit our website www.citiespay.com.gh and choose what is right for you. Call us on 0595-738121. Steady's Pay. We leave no one behind. Imagine running a business with 247 dedicated internet as well as calls to both local and international corporate clients at very affordable prices. Whatever your objectives, Airtel Tigo Business can help you through services like FlexiNet Mobile Broadband among others. Call us at 0577-555-000 or email us at business at airteltigo.com.gh Airtel Tigo Business, your total business solutions provider. Imagine say water wake up at dawn. You know both. You know chop. When it vanish for your area for two weeks, uh? you not get one drop self inside your tank. Hey. Hajia, our life was in dangerous. Only our neighbor get water with water tank. Water, water tank? tank? Yes, water tank. Mamma mia. That water tank gets meter for checking water level. That water tank be fine past Kumasi Selenium. <laughs> that water tank be tough like Ghana Army. That water tank, they carry water, pe -pe -pe, so say some no go left inside the supply tank. Mm. What a tank! That's my boss, Mr. Foncho Gotor. <laughs> Beautiful, durable, with water level indicator and accurate volume of water. Water tank! What a tank! By Duraplast. Coffee in your cup. Joy on the set. The Super Morning Show is always the best bet on Joy 99.7 FM. Right, so welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us here on the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. And this morning, we're joined by Sheikh Arim Yaw Shaibu, spokesperson to the National Chief Imam and Hanifa Yaya, who is managing partner here and partners at law. We're talking about uh, the Ramadan. Well, we're, we're done now. But of course, the period was a period of discipline, a period of devotion and spiritual emphasis and exercise. But the question really is, why is it so difficult to transfer all these things mm. when it comes to the nation Ghana? We'll get into all of that shortly. But um, let me just continue with you, uh, Hanifa. You're making a point when we lost you. You said when you are cooking, um, what must you do? You Hello, Hanifa. Fasting. Yes, I can hear you now. If you can start all over. We are cooking during the fast, mm -hmm. and all the adults around are fasting as well. Uh, of course, when you are uh, fasting, you don't eat. Mm -hmm. But when you are cooking, too, you need to taste the food to ensure mm -hmm. that there's adequate salt, adequate pepper, and all of that. Now, in the absence of any adults to taste or any children who can, you know, reasonably uh, determine whether the salt is adequate, the adult is allowed to taste the food, but not to swallow it. <laughs> so you taste for salt or whatever, and then you spit it out and rinse your mouth. Because the idea is that you're not supposed to let any food or liquid or anything pass your throat whilst you are, you are fasting. Mm. So and you're able to yes, do this? So you, 
sorry, go ahead. Yes, no, go ahead. I'm listening. Yes, so you you you, you get to taste, but you, you don't you don't get to swallow. And and it's 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 a very uh, exciting uh, month, you know, in 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 the Muslim calendar. Uh, families congregate to break the fast together, and children get excited in 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 the midst of it all. And you know, even non-Muslims um, who live within the community also get into the fray. You know, cooking communally, serving communally, everybody eating together at dawn, and then in the evenings when the fast uh, okay. gets broken. Great. So, Sheikh, take us through the significance briefly of uh, the month of uh, Ramadan. Yeah, <coughs> I mean, thank you very much. Can you hear me well? I mean, the, the, the line is a bit faint for me. Oh, I can hear you very well. Okay. Um, going going straight to uh, the Quran, which is our reference point when it comes to these um, religious uh, matters, is it made very clear to us the significance of the month of Ramadan. The Holy Quran says that the month of Ramadan is the month in which the, the Quran was revealed. So, then one significance which comes there clearly here <clears throat> is to say that that was the month in which the mysteries of divine revelation was made to become part of human experience. So the prophet was receiving this revelation from what you call the, the well-guarded tablet at the divine realm. It was made available to the human experience through the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So mm. when we fast in the month of Ramadan, if you, if you like, we say that Ramadan is the month in which we celebrate the history of our revelation, which for, for us is very, very key um, for the guidance it, it gives us. Because then the Quran says that the, the, for, for the, was revealed for the guidance of mankind. Okay. Now for the guidance of mankind, indic indicating that there is no discrimination what it comes to, uh, what the human being needs to be able to guide himself to be, live a life of fulfillment in this world and then to also go to the, the other side of, of life. So that is the first um, significance. Mm. The second significance is that it is a month in which we are also su supposed to fast so that we can attain what we call God consciousness. Mm. God consciousness, it can, you, you can give it different, different interpretations. Some, some call it God consciousness, some call it piety, some call, call it righteousness. And some call it the fear of God. But in all these things, in the month of Ramadan, our sense of the presence of God in our life is enhanced. Okay. And that is what set the check and the balance in our lives to be able to really lead, lead a life, if you like, of moral refinement and uh, spiritual reinvigoration um, of, of our lives. And um, that is it. So there's a certain moral enhancement uh, in the month of Ramadan when we are able to, to, to do so. Now, the month is also supposed to engender certain virtues. Mm. Those virtues are very, very germane to social cohesion and social bonding and, and social support. One of them is that Ramadan is a month of generosity. So we've been told that by the prophet that, uh, by the prophet's wife, Aisha, that the prophet is a very generous person, but he became even more generous during the month of Ramadan. So, so going, going to this, if the prophet is an exemplar of virtues, then we draw inspiration. We draw inspiration from his act of generosity. Um, and that is why you notice that there's a certain kind of ritual at the end of Ram Ramadan which we do. And that is the, what we call the Zakat al fitr that is the charity of the breaking of the fast. Mm -hmm. That is, there's a certain quantity of food that has been prescribed that every single Muslim, including the newly born child, will have to be given out to the poor and the deprived of society. The wisdom is that why even a newly born child will give is that we, we broaden the scope of collection so we can widen the scope of distribution. Okay. So that you must reach as, as far to the extent that, as the prophet said, no single beggar on that day will be seen on the streets stretching arms, his arms to beg, because begging is very demeaning. And on a joyful day of celebration, let's not see a single Muslim who is begging on the street. Yeah, so 
these and and and, and then the, the personal discipline the personal discipline and these are virtues that are so germane to the development of every community every nation okay. because we are human beings and we live by virtues they are the foundation of the actions that we and that we, we do in order to make a contribution to preserve our, our nations our communities and to make a contribution so that progress and development peace and harmony will also be, be enhanced yes. devoid of all these that i have mentioned it makes the ramadan season for us in my view an empty exercise but once we can go beyond just the form of fasting which is restraining ourselves from eating and drinking by going to the essence where our fear of god is enhanced and our relationship is so en enhanced we are peaceful we are loving we are able to touch every 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 needy need, needy person put smiles on the face of, of of people we are honest we are incorruptible we are all those things these are the things that we need that fasting should be urged us to do in order to become contributors to. But if the more we fast, the more corrupt we are, the more we fast, the more dishonest we are, the more we fast, the more greedy we are, the more we fast, the more covetous we are, then in my view, there's a huge contradiction that needs to be addressed. Great. Now, that view that you express is actually the focus of our conversation. Uh, because... Um not only, yes, Muslims have a month where they fast, but even today in Christianity, you have people coming together. For instance, a church could declare 30 days, 40 days of fasting here and there. You've talked about everything. You've talked about how the, it's supposed to promote virtues. Today we're talking about Islam, promote virtues. But Sheikh, you would agree also, as you stated and as you ended, that all of these things you talk about, when it's time for fasting, people do away with all the ills but immediately after fasting, for even that person who fasted, he or she goes back to the same thing. Why is that the situation most of the time? I think, like I mentioned earlier on, for most Muslims, and I so so, I say so cautiously and with respect to all my other you know, co-religionists, uh, not to denigrate anybody, but I am a very typical Zongo breed, born and bred in the Muslim community. So I have lived uh, through the stages when I, I was a Muslim, but not a conscious Muslim. Oh. That was, I was just a Muslim by my family tradition, if you like, by my social environment, what I see my parents were doing. Uh -huh. So that was one of the stages. But I want me to grow out of that stage, to become conscious. So you, you, you become Muslim by consciousness. Now, if, that, if there's a gap here, <clears throat> then most Muslims will do the fasting as culture, as tradition. So that we don't move to the very essence. Because fasting is a means. Like the, like, like the Quran will tell us that all, all you who believe, fasting has been prescribed to you as it was prescribed to nations that came before you, mm. so that you will develop piety or God consciousness. So if you go by the, by the explanation of this text, it's clearly by the logic that fasting is not an end in itself. It is a means to an end. And so therefore we must, remember this, we must focus very much on the end, the objective of the fasting. If we miss the objective, what it means is that we've lost it all. And I think that we have not been very conscious along that line. And there are many people who have lived in the community, um, they are not conscious of this. So there's no that personal effort. Because fasting is about the refinement of the human person. So that you shut off the gap of crudeness and you now put on the new gap of refinement. And that refinement must lead you throughout life. So that incrementally, with every fasting season, you see an incremental refinement in your life so that in the process you are getting perfection. Oh. So, so for me, as somebody who is in the forefront of preaching and all those things, I see that there is this, this gap which we must continue to, to preach and to guide and to raise consciousness, to sensitize, but I don't think we have reached that target yet. And that's why somebody will tell you uh, because I'm fasting, uh, I'm no more in relationship with my girlfriend. 
Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, he knows that ordinarily, the moral life of the Muslim does not go with that kind of life. Okay. But because it's in Ramadan, he said, I have stopped. Immediately, the day he finishes Ramadan, he goes back to that. What it means that he did not make any gain in the, in the month by okay. way of the, the spiritual strengthening insight and the moral refinement, he, he, he did not gain it. Somebody says that, I'm fasting now. I'm, I, I'm at loggerhead with somebody. Now, because of fasting, I will not fight. Immediately after the fasting, he's going back to fight. It means that he lost his all. The patience and self-restraint that he's supposed to develop over the period, he has lost it. And all those things. So, I think, I think it's, a, it's a matter for us to continue. It's a matter for us to continue talking, uh, hoping that, uh, uh, in my view, we need to really target the young people of today very, very well at our school level, at the Makaranta level, at the family level, at the mosque level. At the mosque level, we need to really reorganize the mosque because every every day, five times we pray. What kind of preaching can we, does it? Does any session of the prayer or provide opportunity for some guidance? Um, now people come to pray in the mosque. They are running away from the mosque like they are being chased. They have no time to spare. Some five minutes at the end of the prayer for some counseling. Um, so, so we need to we need to do something about it, and then the Makaranta system should also be improved so that we catch them young from the day one. We catch them young so that they are able to grow as very conscious uh, conscious Muslims. Mm. Um, that that is, in my view, what we, we need. So, so there is a certain deficiency in the way that we are bringing up our own people. Uh, Sheikh, this is Mama V. Uh, this is a, a rather worrying trend. I think we've spoken before about how crime in certain areas, for instance, go down during the period of fasting and then just picks up right after fasting. How do we make everyday Ramadan? Uh, no, not make people fast every day. Uh, but can we actually change this trend with the strategies that you proposed, for instance, catch them young, uh, because if you bring it to the national, you know, in, in, if you include all of us, this is not just a Muslim um, situation. It's yes. actually a national, because we go to church right after the church, sometimes in the compound of the church, you see through how people drive that they are back to normal. Everything that was preached just ended in the chapel. How do we begin to change this? I mean, very, very, very important question. And, and, and I, look, I like the expression you used, a life of everyday fasting. A life of everyday fasting means that it is not necessarily by restraining uh, uh, ourselves from eating and drinking, but a certain mental, continuous and uh, consistent mental fasting. That means that we maintain our constancy and consistency with you know, our relationship with, with God, it is really, really something that requires a certain strategy. Reviewing of our approach to preaching, um, how we are bringing up our children, um, the, the new mode of parenting, um, our Macarantha system and how we really reorient the teachers who are teaching, teaching there, um, getting our imams, um, to, begin, to begin to look at the, a, a certain new arrangement in the mosque, such that the mosque is not necessarily for rituals, but it's also a center of a certain moral reorientation, uh, where moral counseling takes place, and the imam, and the imam must be somebody who is trained himself uh, to understand um, issues of counseling, and because sometimes these things are not limited to just the quoting the copious quoting of the, the Quran mm. and the tradition of the Prophet. But it requires a methodology, uh, a certain kind of uh, approach uh, where we see a crisis and we want to overcome the crisis. So you need to really sit back again and re-strategize. And I think that these centers of Islamic, uh, if you like, way of life uh, needs to be reviewed and see what are the new things we need to put in to ensure, particularly at the family level, what kind of new parenting should we give that before the child leaves the family level, even the orientation of the family level itself is enough. Mm. Then the Muslim child typically 
once he leaves the family, the next place he's going is the Makaranta. That's the, the new field of orientation. At the Makaranta level, how is, is he being oriented? Uh, it, it, that's also very, very, very right. important. And then our, at our normal school levels, we also do do same. Right. These are things that I think, uh, because I get worried and I, I have been very, very blunt. And sometimes on my pulpit, I'm so blunt. I know Muslims are part and parcel of this Langardism. You know that there are Muslims who, because they are strong, mm. they are rented to use brute force to dispossess people who have legitimately acquired their land. And these Muslims, young people, are rented because of their strength to go and dispossess. They kill. Mm. I mean, it's something that I'm, I don't miss my words on it. So if a young Muslim will grow this way, he's fasting every year, but with every fasting season, he become a, he become brutish. And then uh, one will finish the fasting, he can go and do land guard, and he has no clemency, no mercy. He can kill, he can kill people. I, for me, it's a big contradiction, and uh, there's no way we can have to mince words in this all armed robbery, and so and so on and so forth. Um, killing of people who that that becomes I mean immorality, sexual immorality, and all 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 those things are things that are very worrying because for me it is really undoing the very virtues that we are able to make on on Ramadan. And the Quran has a nice way of expressing it. It says, "Do not undo." undo the thread that you have spun mm. uh -huh, so that it becomes now uh, useless to you. In other words, when you are spinning um, a, a, a thread out of, what do you call it, a, a cotton, you know how you spin it, and you spin it, in other words, it becomes a thread where you are able to use it in weaving. He said, after you have spun it, now it is now ready for you to use in, in, in weaving, now you undo what you have spun. Right. That's how the Quran, the Quran used the, the expression it uses. So, I agree with you, and I think that that mental consistent fasting is what we need to really do something about and give that mindset to the largest tract of the Muslim community. As for morality, like I, you know, um, you cannot have a perfect world because of, the, because of our human nature. But it's something that we should do much to use religion as a vehicle to reduce to the barest minimum crime and evil and other social vices that is affecting our progress as a community and, and as, as a nation. Mm. For example, I cannot accept that we are fasting every year, and the more we fast, the more corrupt we are. Go to every public institution, the corruption is so high. I cannot accept it. So I want to see a Muslim who, out of fasting, is become so honest, so compassionate, so hardworking, so disciplined. These are the things that we, 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 we want to see. Mm. So remember, probably together with you, we have to come continue this job. This job. Yeah, Sheikh, definitely. And let's bring uh, Hanifa into into this conversation. Uh, what do you make of the suggestions? Uh, Sheikh just mentioned a few of the strategies that we can adopt. What do you think, from your point of view, especially also because of the law background that you have? Oh, it looks like we lost uh, Hanifa. Do we have her? Oh. Apologies, I think we lost her again. We'll try and raise her back on the line. In the meantime, uh, don't you just hate it when your favorite light soup or tomato stew tastes of because you use chicken that is just not fresh? Well, we at La Bianca Company Limited have good news for you. La Bianca introduces you to its latest product made right here in Ghana. It's Akoko Tasty. With Akoko Tasty, every chicken meal will be a delight. We offer well-bred and slaughtered fresh chicken to suit all your needs in need of wings and quarters for your barbecue today holiday gizzards and breasts uh, for your stir fries or sauces well try akoko tasty we offer all chicken parts for all your culinary needs to order contact la bianca on 050-543-1111 or 050-066-0144 or visit our facility at the tema fish and harbor la bianca your number one frozen foods company so every time we eat food and sugars are trapped between our teeth leading to tooth decay gum disease and in some cases foul breath well brushing your teeth every morning and night with Pepsodent Cavity Fighter gives your teeth the protection they need, leaving you with 10 times stronger teeth. Pepsodent Cavity Fighter is fortified with pro fluoride and micro calcium ingredients, sealing tiny and invisible holes in your teeth. Now, this prevents cavities, uh, keeps your teeth strong and mouth healthy. 
Pepsodent cavity fighter, maximum cavity protection, 10 times stronger teeth. And Pepsodent is recommended by the Ghana Dental Association. There are two other highly effective variants of Pepsodent on the market. Pepsodent charcoal made with a fine blend of activated charcoal and lemon essence. And Pepsodent charcoal white gently polishes away tooth stains and naturally restores your bright smile. Pepsodent Herbal for our Herbal Lovers, try Pepsodent Herbal Toothpaste, formulated from carefully selected natural extracts and uniquely blended herbs. Pepsodent Herbal releases, repairs and protects gum tissues while giving you, giving you strong teeth. You can get Pepsodent at any shop near you. Call our customer care center on toll free 0800-2030. Always remember uh, to brush your teeth in the morning and before you sleep at night. Pepsodent, every smile matters. And I think we have Hanefa back on the line. Please, if you can hear me. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Mama. Okay, Sorry, good to have you. you. Uh, that's fine, but I hope that you listen in on what Sheikh said just yes. before your yes. line dropped. Yes, I heard everything. So following his, uh, his, his comments on the corruption bits, a good friend of mine, Victor, sent a message in, and he says, I know of a friend who takes bribes every day to facilitate client documents go through fast and get signed. And during this Ramadan, he told all his clients to hold on to the envelopes <laughs> so that after the Ramadan, he'll come for all of it. <laughs> How do we end this? How do we make every day Ramadan? Uh, the human, the human frailties are uh, 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 difficult to, to, um, to cure. Um, but I, I am op optimistic that once Ramadan is able to at least bring the consciousness on for people to say, hold on, I'm in the holy man. I am seeking forgiveness of my God of all my previous years. Don't come and tempt me. Hold on. When I finish praying and fasting and asking for forgiveness and I'm forgiven, come back and continue. Um, it, it's unfortunate. It, we are supposed to come out of the Ramadan renewed and different. And I'm hoping that there are examples out there of some people who actually come out renewed and then they abstain from, from at least one aspect of their life which is negative and which has been impacted by the Ramadan permanently. Um, I, I, I'm also concerned that enforcement 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 of laws and policies and regulations um, will help and the lack of which also you know allows the impunity in, 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 in corruption and other criminal and negative activities immoral activities um, to persist in every society uh, we grapple with, 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 with crime, with, with immorality. Um, there are laws that we have that should uh, be used to serve the human being. You know, we need to be saved from ourselves sometimes. Mm. And that is why we have leadership. That is why we have law enforcement. That is why we have the courts. That is how prisons are built. So that people will be saved from themselves. If you allow man the free will, to just go out and do whatever they want, they will harm themselves. You know, so um, I'm hoping that the enforcement of the laws generally. And uh, Sheikh mentioned the li li uh, land gas uh, issue. I mean, we, we we all know it happens. We all know our law, law enforcement agencies know some of the people who do some of these things. We all know people who cause the land gas services to be requested. Somebody's land is there, it is not yours, you go and jump onto it and then you start building, you know, desperate situations sometimes call for desperate measures. And so if you don't touch anybody's land, you don't try to steal somebody's land, lifeguards will not be needed in the first place, uh, both ways, either to do the stealing or to do the prevention. If our law enforcement is able to be up to the top, people and tell them, and, and, and ask them what their issues are with law enforcement. They will, they will tell you that somebody has come out. Only yesterday I got a call. Somebody has come to my land. There's a house on it. There's land in front. They quickly came, built a wall, closed the gates of the owner of the house, 
with a new war put a gate on it and they've taken the land in fault. Brazen, brazen, broad daylight, uh, land TV, you know. And when they go to the police, they get the sense that the police is not helping uh, and, and they're frustrated, you know. So what do we do? In such situations, you also go and get a land guard. Is it illegal? Yes, it's illegal. Are you desperate enough to, you know, want to take this situation? You would. You know, and, and there's also the, the worrying trend about uh, drug addiction among our youth. I mean, imagine that in the month of Ramadan, all the youth, Muslim youth who dabble in drug addiction and all that are able to stop for one month. Imagine the improvement they will get in their health. Mm -hmm. You know, one month of, of uh, you know, no drugs, no alcohol, no anything harmful to your body. You know, fantastic uh, 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 opportunity Allah has given us mm. to cleanse our act. You know, so imagine that out of the lot, even if we get 10, 20 people who are able to come out of Ramadan and they have been able to cleanse their addiction permanently, that mm. is fantastic. Mm. But in the absence of that, ad is drug addiction uh, lawful? It is not lawful. Do our drug uh, our law enforcement agencies know? where our youth hang around and take drugs day and night. Yes, they do. do. What are we doing about it? Our social services, are we able to offer, you know, uh, uh, services to youth who are uh, addicted to drugs? Where is our social welfare system? You know, what, 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 what are we doing to, 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 help, to help ourselves? These, these are the multiple uh, uh, problems that we face. And it's not only Ghana, I, I, I admit, that even in the advanced world, they grapple with some of these things. Mm -hmm. If we are able to, you know, uh, uh, take charge of, of the enforcement, I keep saying that because of, uh, you know, what I do and what I, I, I see every day. Mm. Uh, people, will, people will respond. If you crack the legal whip, if you ensure that somebody doesn't get away with, with their crimes, you know, the, 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 the Ramadan spirit will, will permanently remain. Because right. if you resume and you are, you know, uh, acting in a criminal way and the law cracks it with and you are arrested and due process is taken and you are punished okay. appropriately, mm -hmm. I'm sure that, you know, we will feel uh, the essence and the benefits permanently of, of the holy month. Well, um, Hanifa would like to say thank you so much for your time. Uh, this is a, a definitely a conversation to continue in, in other ways. But for now, we're very grateful. Uh, thank thank you. you also to you, Sheikh Aramayao Shaibu. Uh, thanks a lot. We're going to carry the charge uh, and, and then make it a national conversation. Let's try every day and see if we can make every day Ramadan, even though people will not be fasting. Yeah. Well, you, and talking about making every day Ramadan, um, when we return after these messages, we'll be joined by Sheikh Dr. Mustafa Hamid. I'm sure we all know him. He's the CEO of the National Petroleum Authority after these messages. Hey, Bakofi, your ceiling be smooth, bright and fine, Papa. That's an understatement. It they blink like 80 carats white gold. This be interface plasterboard ceilings. Smooth, bright, and long lasting. Everybody where they come here, they fill up. Where they direct them go interface limited for world class quality. If you're involved in new property development, renovation, or decoration, the right place for you is Interface Limited. Call us on 0274-999999 or visit our website at www.interfacelimited.net. Facebook, Interface Limited GH. Instagram, Interface.limited. She's so close to the boss, they whisper. The PA is so lucky. They think it's only 9 a.m. and you've already gone through three meetings, 12 phone calls, and a low calorie breakfast. You only survive each week thanks to speed lunches and power naps. It makes you wonder hmm, how many steps have I taken up the corporate ladder? But you've got this. Wake up your vim with Lucozade. Because with Lucozade, you always make it through. Lucozade, restore your energy. This advert is FDA approved. 
Introducing the new Techno Spark 10 series. Enjoy a long lasting 5000 mAh battery capacity plus 18 watts charging pack in an ultra sleek 6.7 inch full HD screen with a storage galore of 256 GB plus 8 GB. You can save every memory and never lose any. 32 megapixels glowing selfie camera and 50 megapixels AI rare camera. Get your Techno Spark 10 series. Visit the nearest Techno accredited shop and join the glowing selfie gun. Any time is a good time to have a break. Introducing Munchy Anytime Crackers. It's perfect for break times, party times, movie times, and snack times. Savor the moment. Enjoy Munchy Anytime Crackers anytime. Munchy Anytime Crackers. It's light and tasty. This outfit is FDA approved. What? It seems Royal Foam did not get the memo. Times are tough. Prices are going up. They're giving 10% discount. Free pillows with every purchase. Hey, Royal Foam. Just when you thought all they manufacture are quality but affordable mattresses and pillows, they take it up a notch by being thoughtful in these hard times. Royal Foam has reduced their prices drastically. Buy a mattress, get a free pillow. Enjoy 10% discount instantly, nationwide. Take advantage. Enjoy Royal Foam. Enjoy the best. Call Royal Foam today on 020-227-1000 for more information. Royal Foam, rest assured. Mm. We shouldn't have gone to that party. Masa, my head is killing me. Is that your stomach? Yes. What did you eat? I don't know. Get rid of your gastric problems with number 10 liver salt. Number 10 gives you quick, effective relief from nausea, indigestion, heartburn, hangovers, and hyperacidity. And with different fruity flavors such as orange and lemon, it's a pretty tasty way to end an uncomfortable situation. Number 10 liver salt from Anna's Chemist. Because everyone needs a chemist. This advert has been vetted and approved by FDA. Coffee in your cup, enjoy on the set. The Super Morning Show is always the best bet on Joy 99.7 FM. So just before the break, I told you that we'll be joined by Sheikh Dr. Mustafa Abdulhamid, who's uh, the CEO of the National Petroleum Authority. He's here with us. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. I uh, hope you're doing very well. God willing, I'm fine. A uh, long time. Very, very. <laughs> anyway, we'll get, we'll, we'll get into a conversation about, uh, and like Mamavi puts it, making everyday Ramadan. Because for some reasons, when it's time for Ramadan, even... Uh, the very worst of persons will tell you, hold on a minute. <laughs> I am going to do this period and then after that we'll get back to the things <laughs> of the past. How do we ensure that we never get back to the things of the past in our lives? But first, Kingdom Books and Station Limited, your number one supplier of quality office essentials, equipment, and furniture at affordable prices. Introduce an online store for your shopping convenience. This means you can shop by simply logging on to kingdomstoreonline.com without physically coming to any of our branches. It is hassle-free. We'll arrange delivery to your home and office within a reasonable time, offering free delivery within Accra and Tema. And we accept payment via Momo across all networks. Terms and conditions apply at Kingdom Quality and Affordability. Are there hallmarks? And Don Marcos Travel and Tours, your reliable travel consultant, is organizing an exciting summer tour to Seychelles Island, your preferred tourist destination with unique islands and colorful beaches. It's from the 29th of June to 8th July 2023 with only 1,000. That's the equivalent of 1,900 US dollars for singles and 3,500 US dollars for double. Tour package includes visa travel air ticket ground transport air transfers 
or airport transfers accommodation in a three-star hotel for nine days breakfast lunch and dinner sightseeing entry visas cruise ship ride and navigation this live entertainment on board pick up your valid passport add your covid 19 and yellow fever vaccination cards and that's it please get in touch with don marco's travel and tours on 0249-045-442 or 020-293-0863. You can also send an email to travels at gmail.com. Don Mackles is on the Spintex Road opposite Bachona Total Filling Station, Tempus Estate Road. Remember terms and conditions apply to this don marcos travels your reliable travel consultants great so doc you know um whenever it's time for ramadan and i see you know one of my i i mean i have a friend for instance i'll use his situation i have a friend <laughs> who has been this day says he's an american muslim you know that term american muslim when it's time for ramadan he wouldn't answer anybody's call he says you are the satans in my life when he finishes he says you know what i'm praying and the angels are sending my prayer to God. So wait. <laughs> wait for two or three days. Then he comes back and says, Oh, now that they've sent the prayer to God, I can get back to the things of old. <laughs> I say this because during that period, he had the discipline to go through. He went for a wedding. He didn't eat. He didn't drink, not even water. But right after the period of fasting, he gets back to all the things again. This morning, we're exploring this conversation. Why can't we, as a people, behave the way we behave during the holy month? Why is it so difficult? It's so difficult because that's a difficult question you have asked me. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, yes, um, you are right that the purpose of the Ramadan is to instill in you the discipline the god consciousness and like i've been telling the muslims we don't have a god of ramadan and a god of shawal and a god of rajab or a god of shaban and these are the other names of the names of the other 12 months that i'm mentioning mm. god is a god of all months and a god of all seasons so quite frankly if god says that um establish the fast or as it says quran 283 183 says Fasting is, is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you that you may learn God consciousness. That God consciousness is supposed to then live with you for the rest of the month, for the rest of the year. But I want to acknowledge that we are also human. Mm. And part of the human condition is frailty, is susceptibility to, if you want, falling. Okay. Um, in Islam, there are three categories of humans, or some people call it the three categories of souls. One, the soul that is prone to evil. Then number two, they call something the self-accusing soul. And then number three, they call something the soul at peace. Okay, so uh, the, the soul that is prone to evil is the, that person who is always choosing wrong over right. You know, the people, there are people who have a, a penchant for wrongdoing, a penchant for evil. Mm. You know, the typical and obvious example I can give you is the example of, say, a serial killer. Mm. Okay, that's a soul prone to evil. And so, Islam says that these acts of devotion that we perform are supposed to cleanse us and take us on a journey. Okay, so that's why the Muslims pray every day. You know, I, I don't know whether you know the Muslim version of the Lord's Prayer. No. You see, our Father our who art in Lord heaven, Lord hallowed Lord. be thy name. Muslim says, um, praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship. You alone we ask for help. Guide us onto the straight path, the path of those on whom you have bestowed your favor not of those who go astray nor of those who earn your anger amen mm. Mm. interesting that's a powerful one isn't yeah. it yes it is uh-huh kwami sefa kai my friend has been telling me the one that i like inside is master of the day of judgment mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. and and you know i i wanted to quote the part that says guide us onto the straight path mm. so all of us are on a path towards god 
that's what we are that's what we do you know i tell people that they say that we were created in the image of god but we have to strive to be a likeness of god so we move from image to likeness mm. you see yeah so in in that movement the only way you can move on that journey is to engage in acts of devotion prayer fasting meditation chanting god's names all of those in recitation of the quran these are the acts that keep you moving on the journey so you are not stagnant mm. so you move from being a soul prone to evil to become a self-accusing soul and that's where i want to stop to uh, answer to your friend's example sure you know the majority of humans are at we are we are all self-accusing souls and a self-accusing soul is a soul that will do evil or do wrong but would become conscious of that wrong mm. and and repent mm. mm-hmm. you see you mm-hmm. accuse yourself that's why we call it the self-accusing soul you know that mm, this thing that i did it's not good yeah then you repent the muslims call something istighfar istighfar means um seeking forgiveness of god and that's why muslims encourage each other that every day morning and evening you should you should seek forgiveness of god and so so you you accuse yourself and then you you repent mm. but then you find yourself again gossiping about this your work colleague who just left to go and buy watching mm. and then you say mm, why was i backbiting why was i talking yeah. about this mm-hmm. then you reg- that's how we are mm. Mm, the majority of our but we don't have to stop the first thing is supposed to keep us going again till we become nafsa mutma inna that's the arabic terminology for the soul at peace Right. You know, a soul at peace is a soul that chooses right all the time. Mm. Mm. All the time. Like you said, um, that in his public life, if I am Muslim and I am minister, I am chief executive, that I wouldn't take bribe and look the other way for some ONC to sell contaminated fuel to somebody. Mm. That i wouldn't take bribes to issue omc licenses to people who don't deserve to hold those licenses you are doing right all the time Mm. irrespective of who so that is what fasting is supposed to if you fast in for 30 days and then you are in a hurry for the fast to be over so you go back to what you were doing before Mm. the fast then really and truly um I would say it be- it's better you didn't fast at all but because you should fast with the consciousness that you are hoping to continue to 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 to, to live by those values right. even after the month of ramadan the point of peace i guess that's the destination that we all want to get, get to, to yes. but that's uh, by ourselves is difficult to achieve but even the points of consciousness is not bad if yes. you do wrong and you're prompted you know within that you've done wrong that in itself is a good thing it means that at least you are aware that you've done something wrong oh absolutely yeah absolutely so that's why i said to you that the majority of humans on earth are at that stage we are the majority perhaps 90 95 percent of us are self-accusing souls Mm. you know because we are unable to to avoid some pitfalls Mm -hmm. you know sometimes you are talking about your your colleague Quite frankly, sometimes not even because you mean you mean evil. S- sometimes, you know, it's it becomes part of our daily existence, right. you know, to talk about other people uh, and and gossip and as they say backbite and etc. Yeah. etc. So it's not really um, terrible, as I said. Even the consciousness. That's why I said that, uh, you know, the Quran verse that says. Fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so that you may learn the Arabic word that is used there is so that you may learn taqwa. Now, when you read the translations of the Quran, most of them translate it as so that you may learn piety or so that you may learn righteousness. Mm. Okay. But I prefer to translate it as so that you may learn God consciousness. Right. Okay, so I, I want to explore that a little bit. Yes. How do we use that, knowing that we are not perfect and it's really difficult to be perfect? How do we use that in our daily activities? 
at least if we're conscious that what we're doing is wrong, we will retreat. Mm -hmm. How do we get to that point? How do we get to that point? How we get to that point is, you know, uh, let me let me veer off and give an example. There was this Muslim preacher, and this is a true story in Tamale, who, you know, during the month of Ramadan, one of the things that Muslims also do a lot is Quranic interpretation. You know, oh. you have these pockets of yeah. imams in the various mosques, and then they would have followers come and listen every evening throughout yeah. the month of Ramadan to their interpretation of the Quran. And there was this imam who every evening during his tafsir sessions he had a rival sect youth in a rival sect who would come and try to harass him mm. and disturb his interpretation sessions and every time they come he's like please um in in the band zomia now when zomia now when i say munsuro nyame like fear mm. god fear god but they kept coming so one day he went and brought the police to come and stand guard at the place and the youth didn't come so when he was about to start he says he says you see humans you fear police you don't fear god mm. you, I, I get the point yeah. i'm using that to make a point that they were conscious that there was a police mm. and therefore they didn't come to harass the man but if they had been god conscious they wouldn't have harassed him in the first place mm. because god is the ultimate police yeah is the preeminent policeman are, are, you, are you following me i am or as some people want us to to believe policewoman or whatever he is <laughs> <laughs> these days they say that <laughs> everything is gender inclusive mm. <laughs> but pardon me if you are gender sensitive or whatever this is what we know so god is the ultimate policeman and therefore if you are conscious of god in your life all the time as I said, there would always be the conscience that will prick you that this thing I'm about to do is not correct. Mm. And that even if you did something that turned out wrong, in Islam, there's something, we, we have a saying that says that uh, the prophet is reported to have said that actions are according to intentions and every man or woman shall be judged according to what he or she intended. Mm. That's fundamental. Because sometimes you could do wrong, but you intended good, but it, yeah. it could turn out wrong. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I guess that's what people define as conscience. That to the extent that your conscience is correct, to the extent that you didn't set out to do injustice, even if it turned out unjust, mm. you, you can still go to sleep. Mm. So, you know, we've been fasting, uh, our Muslim brothers and sisters, we've been fasting as Christians as well. We go to church, we go to the mosque. And yet, we see corruption rising. We're not being good to one another. We're not giving. What is wrong with our society? How can we make it better? We continue to go to church. We continue to go to the mosque. Things are not changing. So... Um, my brother studied some religion at the university. Yes. Um, there was there was one you I'm not sure you met him at the University of Cape Coast, Professor Gaba. Yes, he, Gaba. He, yeah, I, he, I didn't meet him, but he, yeah. he used to come around. Yeah. Uh, exactly. He says that there's a persistence of religion and a persistence of evil at the same time. Okay. Now, how do you reconcile? <laughs> Your question is very important. How do we reconcile the persistence of evil? versus the persistence of religion you know there are societies it is generally said that scandinavian societies are the most uh, i don't want to say irreligious but they are less religious yeah they are less religious but they are also some of the most disciplined mm -hmm. societies mm -hmm. on earth i understand that sometimes when somebody is in a prison in sweden and it's getting to the end of their term in the prison saturday sunday they let them go home and they come back to the prison mm -hmm. they don't run they go and visit their parents in the evening at the exact same time they are supposed to come they come i don't know how many people in someone we can ask mm -mm. that they should go home and visit their parents <laughs> and come back voluntarily in the evening so for me the reason part of the reason this is is that 
I think that it will mean that our communication, both Muslims and Christians, our communication about God and the purpose of existence is what we have missed. You see, the purpose of existence is missed completely. And that is the reason. Because we measure godliness. You know, there are people we know, I'm sorry, but uh, not to mention any example, but there are people we know, we know the source of their wealth in our society. Mm. And then they will come and write on social media, God has blessed them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do you get the point? Merely having the possession is not the blessing. I, 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 are you following me? Sure. So, I think that we need to communicate what real blessing is. I've been telling people that if you are rich and you are still striving for more, you are poor. For me, riches is contentment. That's what to be rich means. Mm -hmm. And that is what our preachers need to communicate. Mm. That riches is not material wealth. There's a Quranic verse that says that woe unto those who hoard wealth and count it thinking that it will make them immortal mm. there's another verse that says you are distracted by worldly gain until you visit the graves you see so i think that there has to be a whole new orientation right. about what is the purpose of god what is the purpose of our existence on earth mm. and then it is only when we get that right that we religion can begin to serve its purpose but if we are going to relate to the churches and then the biggest donor the biggest donor in the mosque is the one who is giving front page or or, or front seat mm. uh, role in the masalachi and 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 so on then we are basically telling people that just go and get rich irrespective right. of what it is i like the two things that you've just introduced purpose and contentment yes and i want us to explore <laughs> this a little further but i want you to stay with us because we have to take a break we'll be back dr mustafa hamid is our guest here on the super morning show are you tired of struggling with bad financial situations at Quick Credit, we understand the difficulties that come with transitioning to a better one. That's why we're here to simplify the process for you. With loan facilities from 1,500 cities upwards, all you have to do is call and we will take care of the rest. All you need is your national ID. No savings, no collateral, no susu, no deposits, and no account opening required. Quick Credit has you covered. Whether you're expanding a business, starting a new one, facing an emergency like school fees or funeral expenses, or even just in need of a salary loan. What are you waiting for? Call Quick Credit today, 0302-200-390 or 059-692-0833. We do not give loans via the internet. Quick Credit is regulated and licensed by the Bank of Ghana. Terms and conditions apply. Quick Credit. Lending made simple. Imagine running a business with 247 dedicated internet as well as calls to both local and international corporate clients at very affordable prices. Whatever your objectives, Airtel Tigo Business can help you through services like FlexiNet Mobile Broadband among others. Call us at 0577-555-000 or email us at business at airteltigo.com.gh Airtel Tigo Business, your total business solutions provider. Charlie, you sure see be diehard football fan who can't get enough of the beautiful game? Then stay connected to DSTV because it's a football festival. Live Ankasa! All the big leagues and tournaments day DSTV. UEFA Champions League, the Premier League and La Liga all day. So my guy, don't miss a single moment of the action. Make you watch players like Haaland, Rashford, Benzema, Sadio Mani and Thomas Pate battle it out. And may you the dead dead. Man slack it. Get your decoder for 269 Ghana cities or dial star 759 hash to Connect and join the excitement. DSTV, it's your moment. Joy 99.7 FM. That's right. Oh, we magnify the Lord with us and let us exalt His name together at the Joy Corporate Worship 2023. The Joy Corporate Worship is a mega gathering of corporate Ghana and all business unto the Lord in worship and supplications. With one accord and a heart of gratitude, let us all come together in worship and appreciate our God for His provision and protection even in the midst of scarcity and uncertainties. Venues in Warehouse Chapel are in fear. Date is Friday 28th 
28th April 2023. Time is 6pm prompt. Leading us in worship will be MOG, Celestine Donko, and other anointed ministers. Don't miss this corporate opportunity to lay it all at his feet in worship at the Joy Corporate Worship. For further inquiries, please call 0302-216-540. Joy Corporate Worship, a corporate appreciation. See you there. Don't say you didn't know that I didn't tell you. So let me tell you again now as I go around telling everybody to again. COVID-19 may have gone quiet but it has not gone away. There are COVID-19 vaccines available for everyone who is 15 years and above. This includes pregnant women and those breastfeeding too. So you have to get vaccinated now. The vaccines are safe, effective and reduce the severity of the infection. The vaccines prevent hospitalization and or even death. Get the jab, get the booster, protect yourself, protect your family, protect your community. This message is brought to you by Ghana Health Service. Good life, live it well. USAID and partners. the super morning show this is joy 99.7 fm we're learning from the essence of ramadan we're asking ourselves a few questions how can we be self-disciplined how can we be committed to our country how can we be given uh listen join the conversation on 055 that's our whatsapp number so if you've been sending the message we'll, we'll get to them in a bit send your tweets to joy 997 and please add the hashtag joy sms our guest in studio is the C the ceo of the national petroleum authority except that we're not talking petroleum here on the show we're not talking fuel prices uh, Dr. Mustafa Hamid, we're exploring these questions with him right here on the show. And before the break, uh, he talked about peppers, God's peppers for our lives and also contentment. And we want to stay there for a while. Uh, but first, carrying multiple phones around can be such a chore. The unsightly bulge in your pocket, the extra weight in your purse, the stress of switching from one phone to the other to pick calls. Now imagine being able to switch between different numbers on the same phone easily and seamlessly. Listen, you can go seamless with MTN eSIM and enjoy the convenience of connecting multiple phone numbers to one single phone or device. To check if your device is compatible, please Please dial star hash zero six hash once you receive an eid number it means your phone or device is compatible simply download my mtn app today to request your mtn e-sim and enjoy the sweet seamless life everywhere you go oh magnify the lord with us and let us exalt his name together at the joy corporate worship 2023 and the joy corporate worship is a mega gathering of corporate ghana and all business unto the lord in worship and supplications with one accord and a heart of gratitude that all of us come together in worship and appreciate our god for his provision and protection even in the midst of scarcity and uncertainties and it's happening this friday uh, the 28th of april 2023 at the royal house chapel in fear time 6 p.m leading us in worship will be mog celestine donko and others don't miss this corporate opportunity to lay it all at his feet in worship at the joy corporate worship for further inquiries please call 302 the joy corporate worship is supported by apostle general sam kranchankra and the royal house chapel ahinfie joy corporate worship a corporate appreciation now the 60th anniversary accountant week celebration being hosted by institute of chartered accountants ghana started saturday 22nd of april and it will end on friday 28th of april this series of events uh, form part of icag's diamond jubilee celebration theme promoting sustainability deepening trust nurturing partnerships and here are the activities line up uh, coming up on the 25th which is tomorrow and 26th of april 2023 a two-day 60th anniversary accountants conference at uh, Uzbek Hotel in Sunyai. Abrewa night on the 25th of April 
at Sunyan Traditional Council. There's a work night, a night with the lady accountants on the 26th of April at 6 p.m. And then tour of the Bui Dam, Kentampo Waterfalls, Boabing, Fiema Monkey Sanctuary, among other interesting tourist sites in Bono region on the 27th of April. Boogie Night featuring a guest artist will happen on the 27th of April. The annual general meeting and dinner dance to climax. The week-long celebration will happen on Friday 28th of April. Don't miss out on any of these insightful and exciting activities lined up to commemorate ICAG's 60th anniversary Accountants Week celebration. For inquiries on how to participate and sponsor, please visit icag.org icagh.org or call John Hansen on 020-892-0373 or Nanekia on 0243-551-788. You can also follow ICAG on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at ICAGH1 and get more updates. Well, so your Sunday night just got very exciting because it is the real deal. It is official cues and lyrics, a music competition show that aims at anything music potential and contestants while providing Joy FM Cherish viewers the ultimate entertainment. Uh, the mating edition was last night. Mm -hmm. I saw it. It was great. Yes. Yeah, it made me miss my singing days. Mm -hmm. Well, watch the 12 batting musicians as they journey to stardom. Don't miss out on the experience every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. only on Joy Prime. Cues and Lyrics is produced by Joy Prime and powered by Hits FM. Cues and Lyrics, bring on the music. Joy Prime, the ultimate experience. And as you have fun, remember COVID-19 is still with us. And so please go and get vaccinated. COVID-19 vaccines are available at all health facilities here in our country. They are safe, effective, and free for everyone about 15 years. So protect yourself by getting fully vaccinated. The COVID-19 vaccines provides protection, reduce the severity of the infection, prevent hospitalization, and death. If you have had your first and second dose of the vaccines, then please go for the booster dose. The booster dose is an effective addition to increase your immunity against COVID-19 disease. Things aren't as cool as they look. Protect yourself, protect your family, protect your community. Avi, so before we continue, you know the verse that uh, Sheikh uh, Dr. <laughs> Mustafa Amir quoted, um, there's a similar one in the Bible. Right. Uh, is Luke chapter 12 verse 15 it says and he said to them mm -hmm. take care and be on your guard against all covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions right for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions doc that's deep oh absolutely absolutely so um i was making the point that happiness is not also in the possessions mm -hmm. okay there are people who are very rich and very unhappy mm -hmm. you know let me let me introduce a joke when i go to places and i'm the chairman of a function speaker all these things that public speaking that i do and people introduce me and say and now int we introduce you the chairman he's happily married i say hey, hey, hey. <laughs> just say that i am married <laughs> whether i'm happy or not you don't know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like that one. I, 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 are, you, are you following me? Yeah, yeah I just, just say that I'm married and leave it there. <laughs> Whether I'm happy or not, you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing with wealth. Mm. You know, there are people who have money, riches, whatever you call them, horses and chariots, and etc., etc. And they are very, very unhappy. What God, that's why there is this Muslim mystic. They call him um, Jalaluddin Rumi. Um, Rumi says that he went in search of God and then he went to Mecca he went to the Kaaba, he didn't find God he went to Jerusalem he didn't find God, he went to the place of the crucifixion, he mentions all these so called holy places around the world mm. and then finally he says I came back and looked into my, inside my heart and there he was mm. Mm. it's a very profound saying I'll yeah. forward it to you Sure. You see, so he says that God is in the heart. God is not in places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are, are, you, are you following me? Yeah. So in the same way, if you translate it, that is why the fasting is supposed to, it is supposed to sit God, to give God a seat in our hearts. And it is only when you have found a seat for God in your heart 
that you can then live above all these trappings that that we are we are talking about mm. are, are you following me if if because we 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 present god as external mm. our father who acts in heaven mm -hmm. rather than our father who dwells in us okay so we we present god as if he's at an epistemic distance it's far off from us far off from us and therefore that's how people are going to behave they are going to pretend that oh he exists but he's this far away god and so on and so forth but if we internalize god if we we nurture god consciousness then what happens is that god sits inside us and it is only when he's inside us that we can get above all these vices that we are talking about in public place corruption mm. this that that stealing and all that i'm thinking winston perhaps that part of the problem could be some of our sheikhs and some of our pastors because i remember you know when he says god in us that when jesus was was leaving he said i am going but the holy spirit will be with you forever and mm -hmm. the holy spirit mm -hmm. is in us mm -hmm. uh, but that type of preaching is is often lost <laughs> I, i'm just thinking yeah. that the society is you know all the vices that we talk about the corruption people going to public service and you really don't see their contribution they just add to the to the issues i'm just thinking that maybe fundamentally something is missing and it's probably from the pulpits it's also the society part of it is yeah um, winston made a point about the fact that sometimes what we get is a product of our times you know you know there are people who say that if you have corrupt leaders they haven't fallen from mass or from jupiter they are, they are the same people they have this is this a reflection of um the society the society yeah those i don't know how old anybody here is but when we're in oh, secondary school ancestor ancestor, ancestor. <laughs> 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 but wisdom when we're in secondary school there are two categories of people who had girlfriends brilliant people intelligent guys in the class mm. And also sportsmen. Yeah. Mm. Finish. If you were not brilliant in the class, then you must be brilliant in the field. Mm. That's the only way girls will gravitate towards you. <laughs> but I guess today the circumstances are different. Oh, they have changed. They have changed. <laughs> <laughs> now it's about whose father has money and mm -hmm. who comes to school with a car mm. and this and that. So the values of our society themselves have changed. Yeah. But like you said, therefore the church the mosque have to mount a real crusade for want of a better terminology to be able to reverse um this this situation and you see the point you made it's actually in, in the bible i think first corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 to 20 it says don't you know your body is a temple of the holy spirit who lives in you mm. And was given to you by God. Mm. You do not belong to yourself, but you belong to God. Yeah. He bought you for a price, so use your body for God's glory. Mm. Mm. But of course, I mean, like I stated today, we've reached a, a time that you know a lot of things have changed. Yeah, things we, have changed. We're thinking about possessions, what do you think? And so that's what the pastors will tell you. But yeah, I think our time is up. We Can we have you again sometime? Not talking necessarily about politics, but discussing some of these issues and reflecting. I have enjoyed it because these are the real things that change our society anyway. Mm. These are mm -hmm. the real things that change our society anyway. I'm sorry, but I'm a politician. I've been a participant in this politics. Uh, we, you remember, we've been blaming our leaders since Nkroma. Of course, Winston. I've been asking people. People say, "Oh, Nkroma was a good man," but it was the people around him. Then Buzia came. They said Buzia was a good man. It's the people around him. Mm -hmm. Then Liman came. They said Liman was a good man. There was people around him. They said John Mahama was a good man. It was people around him. They said Mills was a good man. It's the people around him. They said President Kufuado is a good man. It's the people around him. And they named the people. And mm. say it is these people who are the cause of our problems. And I'm asking, is that true? We'll talk about it. Anna. Is that true? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we will have to have a conversation about what Winston said. Mm. That isn't it the case that our society gives birth to the leadership that the society itself deserves? Mm. Do you know the people who go? Senor said this. Senor also said it in one of his lectures at UPSA. I think it was Democracy Day lecture yeah. or something. He says, "Look, we are all pretending to be talking about corruption, 
sometimes the people who call you chiefs ki kings etc pastors and so on and they ask you hey you mustafa are you still in this your honesty business you sit there and this that 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 when the power is finished you will see if you hey yo do you have this yet do you have this yet and these are people who are important in society well, these are not just ordinary uh, people not to even talk of the ordinary food soldiers who will say that oh you sit there and be doing honesty and integrity you will see where this will land you it's not going to take you anywhere and so on and so forth mm -hmm. so we really have to have a proper national conversation these accusations about ndc and pp i'm not sure it's going to help this society we need a proper conversation of how to situate this country properly so that whether there's an mpp in power or there's an NDC in power. We are guaranteed honest leadership, leadership of honesty and integrity. That's Dr. Mustafa Hamid, thank you very much for joining us and uh, promising that you'll be back again so we'll have another conversation yeah. devoid of politics. Inshallah. Thank you very much for joining us. And Folks, Baraka Dasanda. Baraka Folks, that'll be all from us this morning.